It's the Mandatory Quarantine Show, episode 12. Well, we are nearing the end. We are at the final countdown to getting out and seeing Canada. Uh, so, getting excited for that. Last night I had a really good call with my friend Alana Kelly over in Guelph who's hung up over there and we were discussing the whole uh, calcifidiol treatments and the... Uh, oh, there goes the bells. 2 p.m. Uh, we were talking about the calcifidiol treatments, the vitamin D. There's been another study that came out uh, from India this time having to do with the duration of COVID symptoms having to do with uh, vitamin D intake. They were giving the equivalent of what amounts to about 60 pills worth uh, per day on people who had severe limitations in their vitamin D. And you think, well, that's India. It's sunny. Why are these people so deficient? But I mean, you know, everybody's inside. So that's part of it there. So there's more and more evidence that says that vitamin D uh, levels are highly correlated with uh, outcomes and that there is some sort of effect that's happening there. So if you're right now not on the vitamin D, you probably want to get your levels checked and look into a supplement if they are low. Um, the therapeutic target that they were looking for was about like a level of 50. Um, the majority of health guidelines that currently there are basically saying that, oh, well, we want you over 25, anything under 20 to 25 is considered severely deficient, but that's mostly rickets. Um, a target of about 40 to 60 is where you're looking at immune function. Uh, again, I'm a bioinformatician. That's my closest that I'm here, here to this. I, I'm reading up on the latest of research, but go and check it out yourself. Go talk to a physician and uh, see what you can find out about it from, from there, especially if you're in, on any type of supplementation. But more and more evidence is pointing towards we should almost be just handing everybody for Christmas a bottle of vitamin D on their doorstep and uh, working with that in place. Um, I mean, that's some of the news that's coming out. The Oxford's, Oxford vaccine came out. They have a pathway towards 90%. They have one pathway towards 50, so they averaged it out. It comes out to about 70, but there is a, a dosage that they said was 90% effective. Uh, Russia Sputnik 5, they're saying that they are now basically done their phase 3 and they're still going through that process of the findings, but early results are saying 95% effectiveness in phase 3 trial. That's really good news. I read the phase 2 trial, uh, and which was published in The Lancet, which is not like the worst medical journal in the world. It's one of the top ones, as long as they don't allow Andrew Wakefield anywhere near their stuff. <laughs> Because they were the ones that published that that ridiculous study on autism linked with vaccines, which was just completely disbunked. And that Andrew Wakefield guy who lost his medical license, uh, you know, he probably killed more people than probably anybody from that anti-vaccination stuff. Um, I've been seeing some data about the MMR triple shot, which is actually the thing that was part of that whole uh, Andrew Wakefield issue where the MMR triple shot may have something to do with uh, COVID resistance. So, you know, we're, we're th this is really science by throwing stuff at a wall is the best way to see it um, with a lot of these methodologies. I was looking into how they had the two vaccines that were happening, the Moderna and the Pfizer version. And it's really interesting because what they're using is messenger RNA to actually build stuff. So it's a different pathway of genesis of the, the vaccine. I believe the Oxford one is more closer to like what normal levels are and that's one of the reasons why it's more shelf stable. I don't know about Sputnik as to what the ma method of activation is. I'll probably have to do some more reading on that and figure out what the method of activation is of Sputnik. But the Moderna and the Pfizer are actually a relatively new biological technology that uses messenger RNA strands. So in other words, instead of uh, 
putting like a piece of the live virus or a dead virus into you to try to get it to kind of like activate your antibodies and make your body do it what it actually does is you take the messenger rna that says here's the blueprint for how to build the antibody and then it goes into your own system so it actually kind of is um almost the same sort of pathway that a virus would use it's almost like using a using a a, a virus to fight a virus Oh well, what, what will we do next as as bioinformaticians and doctors and scientists will do horrible, spoofy things, but who knows? This is a new new therapeutic approach, and this is one of the reasons why the time to trial has been reduced significantly. Another piece of this with the time to trial, people think, oh well, you know, we 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 got it there in a year. The majority of the time that we spend as scientists is not necessarily doing the actual science because the trials themselves maybe last a couple of months we have to get people enrolled into them etc you know and maybe the therapeutic time frame is a month but the biggest time pieces are writing grants getting the money giving a budget figuring out how that moves through the university getting approvals having an IRB done and a lot of the reasons why those are slow is because usually you need an administrator to sit down and read through a huge giant proposal and they've got 20 on the desk. So where I, whereas with other vaccines, maybe we can say, oh, well, it takes us four years to do it. This just shows you really what we're capable of when we kind of, you know, fast track and put the uh, same safeguards in place, but we just move everything to the top of the pile. Uh, it, and this is how fast science could actually go. So really what this tells me is we need more IRBs. We need more people reading these proposals and we need more people like funding science in general because when we do have the funding and when we do have the people that have to check off and check the boxes on stuff, look at how fast we can get it done. That would be amazing if we could have, you know, a whole bunch of other research done at this speed. Wow, like a year... I, I don't think people understand, like, a year for a vaccine is an amazing achievement. It really is. And we might think, well, a year, well, that was so long, but, you know, I think it took, I forget how long it took for some of the other ones. But, so, now the, the big issue here will be distribution, the big issue will be getting it out to everyone, and the big issue will be people taking it. So, we've got now four at least four varieties to choose from that are going to be out on the on the marketplace distributed um, i think australia is already announcing like with Qantas airlines that you're going to have to you know have the have the um, proof of uh, injection before you're allowed onto their airline so that might be one of the ways that they start doing this it might be something where they say okay we're going to make it mandatory for all educators for all you know first first line responders for all medical staff for all military for all you know there there probably will be something along those lines just to to bring it up and then we're going to hope that i guess herd immunity takes care of the rest when we can actually build it but uh very good news from that standpoint moving in the right direction you know um Therapeutics, it's still problematic. Uh, the big problem I see is that a lot of the therapeutics, it's not something that aids your immune system, it's just boosting your own immune system. So this is a bit of a problem for those that have a uh, problematic immune system to begin with. So, I mean, it's one of those things where take the zinc, take the vitamin D, take the vitamin C, go out and have a walk, lose some weight, you know, and, and, you know, get your system ready if it does come. So that's the, that's the best thing that we got right now is basically you have to be uh, healthy to begin with and hope that your immune system can take the, take the hit until we get a vaccine. You know, go out with your mask, wash your hands, uh, stay safe out there, everyone. And I'll see you tomorrow for day 13. And we're nearly out. We're nearly out. And on the final bit, I will be able to give you then a tour of the town and the ability to see the area around. So 
Stay safe out there, everyone, and I'm looking forward to seeing you tomorrow on the Mandatory Quarantine Show.